We all have our favorites. When it comes to crossovers, the Mazda CX-5 has always been one of mine. Now what we're looking at here is a 2022 model and it has a few updates, most notably with the front and the design. The wheels are also new, some of the features are new. Uh, there are actually a lot of other things going on inside and under the hood, but more on that later. But let's take a minute to admire the color. Mazda calls this Zircon Sand Metallic and I'm really digging it. Yeah, Mazda may be known for fun to drive cars, but one thing they're also known for is their taste in color. Think soul red or that polymetal gray. We can now add this one to that list. Actually, they like the color so much, they didn't even bother unpainting some of the cladding here. Normally, many crossovers would do these things or even the chin or that uh, running board down there in black, even the door handles. They didn't even bother do doing that. It actually looks good that way. A little bit of chrome here and there, but overall, it's still the same vehicle we've really come to like. Nothing fancy here, no light bars, no dancing lights, nothing of the sort, which we kind of like. Now, if you want to open the tailgate, three ways to do it. One is a button by the driver's knee. Another one is by the button there, or the best one, right here. Now, when you pop open the tailgate, you'll notice that the tonneau cover actually clips onto the tailgate. So when you open the tailgate, the tonneau cover just goes up with it, saves you having to pull it closed and open as uh, every time you open the tailgate. When you look at the cargo area, it's actually very, very spacious, all things considered. And even then, there's also a spare tire here. It's just a donut spare, but it is what it is. It gives you a measure rather than having a tire repair kit. But also, there's a Bose subwoofer there along with your tools. Yes, this one also has a Bose audio system. But what I really like here is the versatility that Mazda factored in with the rear seat because this is not a conventional 60-40 split. This is a 40-20-40. Now, how does that work? Well, for one, here. You pull this lever and that little 20% goes down. Now, what would you need that for? Well. You do skiing or surfing, if you want to put a board there, that could become handy. Golf clubs, maybe. To fold the rest down, there's a lever there and there's a lever there. What that gives you is the ability to reconfigure the space of your Mazda CX-5 to suit your needs. If you want maximum space, you can. If you want a little bit of space here and there, you can. That's always a good thing because it gives you more options. Now this is where it gets really, really interesting because if you look under the hood of this Mazda CX-5, you will still find a 2.5 liter engine, which is kind of familiar. But if you look here, turbo. If you look in the back, you'll see a turbo. This is a 2.5 liter turbo engine. That means it's not a slouch. Mazda didn't try to go for the usual route of downsizing with a turbo to try and compensate. Instead, they went for the 2.5 and boosted it. When you look at the turbo actually in the back, it's quite big and they really shielded that thing. It's, uh, the heat shielding is actually off of the firewall. So they're really trying to make sure that the heat from that turbo and the exhaust system does not get into the cabin, making it more comfortable. But what's really key here, power. It's got 253 horsepower and 434 newton meters of torque with an all-wheel drive uh, drivetrain and a six-speed automatic. Oh yeah, this is going to be fun on the highway and when you're cornering. Uh, looking around the engine bay, what else do we see? We can see that Mazda really focuses on uh, how a car drives just by looking at how it's structured. I mean, they try to minimize the gaps for the engine space. Actually, even though it's a big engine, it kind of fills up the engine bay because they tried to make it as small as possible to make it more rigid, make it handle better. If you look at the shock towers, it's actually connected from there over there, it means less twisting, better handling.
when you sit inside a modern Mazda for the first time, you kind of get a feeling of zen. You know, everything's kind of minimalist. Everything's clean and neat. I mean, look at here. The steering wheel looks very neat. Everything is very perfectly integrated. The instrument cluster looks very uncluttered. The dashboard, the pad, or the iPad type thing here, Mazda kind of was one of the first to do that um, in the Japanese uh, car categories. Um, the climate control system, the control pad here for the, the audio system, it's very Mercedes, like when they did the command system a few years back. I mean, all this actually started when they launched the Mazda 6 about 10 years ago. And that one kind of set the standard, set the tone for Mazda to go for this minimalist, clutter-free, button-free, well, there's a few buttons, but it doesn't look cluttered, and that's what we like. Mazda found joy in keeping everything neat, and to think they predate Marie Kondo by several years with this style. Right now, we're on the expressway, and a lot of the qualities, the good qualities of Mazda's really come through. Like, the smoothness of the transmission, the composure of the suspension, how slick and smooth the body feels when you're driving at 100, 120, that kind of thing. Uh, there's only a little bit of tire noise uh, and certain kinds of asphalt, but beyond that, there's really not much else. I mean, even wind noise is very minimal. Like, yeah, there you go. Now, uh, when you talk about uh, comfort, though, it's really in the city where that would have to be very, very important. But even though Mazda does like to go for performance-oriented qualities, sports car-like qualities in a lot of their cars, they never forget to dial in comfort, to find that balance. It's very difficult to find, to give you a car that is balanced um, when you're driving, let's say, on a fast mountain road, or when you're driving slow or even at a reasonable speed while you're on EDSA or, on C5, or C5. I mean, can you imagine driving a sports car-like vehicle on C5 or even a real sports car? That would just be really uncomfortable but Mazda knows how to find that very very difficult balance and it really shows with the CX-5. We've become used to Mazda having naturally aspirated engines uh, in many of their vehicles but this one is a turbo so let's see if it has some thrust. Floor it. Nice it pitches up really does give you the acceleration okay I don't want to speed too much because you know they're not gonna be happy I was only doing a hundred there and Lex but it really does have a nice bit of thrust to it now when when you're in the city you can feel quite a bit of that and that's something I really enjoy I mean a good turbo engine is really its own reward it you you punch it it just feels great you try to be efficient with it it's going to be good I mean even when I was driving around in the city, I was getting like 9 kilometers per liter, plus or minus maybe 0.2, uh, depending on the traffic. But now, that, now that I'm on the highway and I'm just cruising at a very leisurely 90 kilometers per hour, I'm doing less than 2,000 RPM, I'm averaging around 15.5, which is really nice. But the thing I really like about Mazda is how they do their transmissions. I mean, they don't really like going for DCTs. They prefer to go for um, the traditional, well, not really traditional, automatic, but they try to perfect it. I mean, the response of the automatic on this one is really fantastic. And the paddle shifters here, they're a bit small and plastic, but they're okay. But what I really like is what Mazda does with the manual shifter um, on their automatic, because a lot of car makers, they go for the, the you push to shift up, which is kind of weird, especially if you're a gamer. So this one is a pull to shift up. So push the shift down, let's go down two gears, and then pull to shift up. Feels natural, like you're in an arcade game. This one does have adaptive cruise control, lane departure warning, which by the way, is the best lane departure warning in that I think I've ever tried because it's not intrusive, it will warn you uh, using the heads up display um, that's reflecting on the glass, which is also a fantastic feature. I do wish it had the the glass thing like in the Mazda, I think uh, Mazda 3 before had it, um, where it pops up like that, very fighter jet style, especially now that Top Gun came out. The thing they could have really improved on is this. Because the screen here, 
it's not fantastic. It's like it seems like a generation behind many of its uh, rivals already. So in terms of the resolution, the way it functions, um, the control here, I mean, it's good, but could be great. Another one is the the wireless charging pad because it's positioned on a slope that if you have a phone with a case, when you break, it kind of slides off, which is weird. So that's something uh, to keep in mind. But overall, um, I think they were really holding back to save many of these improvements for the next generation model. Because overall, it's this is the best version of the CX-5 that you're gonna get. And if it's already this good, well, I can only imagine what the next generation is going to be like. If you put all the keys of all the crossovers in this class in front of me, chances are I'm still going to pick the CX-5. But make no mistake, many of its rivals are already catching up. And also, the price of this is quite high. As it stands, it retails for 2,380,000 pesos. Wow! For that money, there's already a lot in the market for you. However, this one does come with the five-year free maintenance factored right in. Is that going to be something that sells you on the Mazda CX-5? Let us know in the comments below. This is Vince of AutoIndustria.com.